نحمدكم ونستعينكم ونستغفره ونشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن ونشهد أن محمد عبده ورسوله أرسله بالحق بشيرا ونذيرا بين يدي الساعة من يطع الله ورسوله فقد رشد ومن يحسه ما فلا يضر إلا نفسه أما بعد فأعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم هو الذي جعل الشمس ضياء والقمر نورا وقدره منازلا حد لتعلم أدد السنين والحساب ما خلق الله ذلك إلا بالحق يفصل الآيات لقوم يعلمون رب اشرح لي صدري ويسر لي امري واحل العقدة من لساني يفقه قولي اللهم ارنا الحق حقا وارزقنا اتباعه وارنا الباطل باطلا وارزقنا اجتنابه امين يا رب العالمين Today I'm going to inshallah talk about a very controversial issue in a very non-controversial way As you know the issue of moon sighting is an issue of a great controversy within the US and around the Muslim world and I want the Muslims to understand that there is a textual base for all the different types of understanding. And so I want to make things a little bit more sophisticated, a little bit deeper understanding, and a little bit more appreciation for the moon. Because the moon is a very, very interesting creation of Allah. But let me start, let, before I get ahead of myself, let me start by what this verse of the Qur'an says. So let me go with the way Qur'an is presenting me. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in Surah Junis in ayah number 5 Allah says It is Allah who made the sun a source of combustion the sun a source of combustion from where the light comes out where the energy comes out and then how did he make the, the moon the moon is such if you just study the moon you will start believing in Allah just if you just study the moon right and uh, so Allah subhanahu wa says, وَجْعَلَ قَمَرَ nura. Nur is usually borrowed light. Like, if I get nur from somewhere, it's knowledge from somewhere else coming to me. Nur from Qur'an coming to me, right? So, if we say, uh, someone has, Allahumma ja'alni nura, this is, what, what is this? This is the dua of the Prophet sallallahu for Fajr prayers. Allahumma ja'alni nura. If it's samari wal basari, the Prophet said, give me light, meaning, Give, it's something that's attained from the outside, put in. This is nur. And then you have the nur of your fitrah. So nur is something that's usually attained. So the moon gets its light from where? The moon gets its light from the sun. But you know what's so interesting? If the moon was a planet like any other, some of the other planets, it wouldn't be as shiny. You know why the sun looks, I mean the moon looks like it's bright and it's shiny? It's because it has a special dust. And this special dr dust is reflective. It reflects back the light to the earth. That's one point. The second thing about the moon that's very, very interesting is, did you know the moon is all, even though the moon is, it's very interesting, even though the moon is rotating, the moon is what? Rotating. But human beings only see one side of the moon. Human beings only see what? One side of the moon. We only see one side of the moon. And this is... So that Allah made it easy for calculation because the mountains of the moons and the craters of the moon make a difference of how the light is going to be reflected back to, to the earth. There's a six degree of, diff there could be up to six degrees or more of difference just because of how the mountainous areas are on the moon. When the light reflects back on the moon, I mean, when the re light reflects back on earth, depending upon the surface structure, the light is thrown on the moon according to the surface structure, right? This, this is understood. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in this miraculous ayah, Allah says, هُوَ الَّذِي جَعَلَ الشَّمْسَ ضِيَاءَ Allah is the one who made the sun a source of combustion. It gives out the light. وَالْقَمَرَ النُّورَ And then what does Allah do? Allah does this. وَقَدَّرَهُ مَنَازِلَ And Allah put qadr. You know what qadr is? Destiny, right? Allah has appointed phases for the moon. Manazila. We also have that. But the moon starts out as one little, like a fingernail, small as a fingernail. And then it gets bigger, and then bigger, and then bigger, and then bigger, and then bigger, until it's what? A full moon. And then it gets smaller and smaller and smaller and smaller and smaller 
until it's back to a fingernail. And this is, and the people that have experience can see, oh, this is the moon for day number one. Oh, this is moon number, day number, what? Two, and three, and four, and five, and up to fifteen. This is actually a very interesting phenomenon, <clears throat> for many reasons which I'm not going to go into right now. Now, as far as the controversy of seeing the moon with your eyes, because there are different controversies. The first controversy is called the issue of Ru'ya or Hisa. Could, could you see the, do you have to see the moon with Ru'ya? Or can you use Hisa the way we do in our prayers with the sun, for example? The second controversy is, do you have to see the moon locally? Or can you see the moon anywhere on the earth? And then it becomes mandatory for you to fast? Or what is, what, there, uh, there's another opinion that I like personally. As long as somebody is sharing your day or night, then they can fall into the, then they have to fast together. Okay, this is the third opinion. The, the fourth opinion is you have to go with Makkah. For example, the people in the North Pole, right? The people in the North Pole, they have light 24 hours. They see the sun and the moon on the same day, right? And uh, so if you have moon tw 24 hours, one opinion is you have to follow the, low, the nearest land that has like a normal sun and moon cycle. This is one opinion. The second opinion is that no, take, uh, make Makkah your standard time. You know what standard time is, right? Like Greenwich standard time. Make Makkah your standard time. So in the North Pole, we apply the time of Makkah because Allah calls it Umm al-Qura, the mother of the cities. So you can use Makkah as the standard time. This is one opinion. But how do we understand all of this? How do we understand these different opinions? Whatever your opinion is, what is important to know is something that I want to share with you, two, three things that are very important to understand. <coughs> Number one, if there is a khilafah, how will we deal with this situation? If there is a khilafah, let's say there's an Islamic state, how will we deal? The Supreme Court will decide, looking at the different opinions, and whether you like it or not, you have to accept it. Right? Like, for example, the Ottoman Empire implemented the Hanafi school of thought. The Umayyad Empire in Spain implemented the Maliki thought. In the public space, you have to go with the Maliki school of thought. And over there in the Ottoman Empire, in the public space, you had to go with what? You can't just say, oh, I'm going to go against society. Whatever the Supreme Court, if they did ijtihad, and it's right, they get how much reward? Double. And if they made a wrong ijtihad, but it's important sometimes to make the ijtihad. Having no ijtihad is worse than making, than making even no ijtihad. Meaning, having a wrong ijtihad is better than making no ijtihad. Especially if it will create anarchy in society. So what happens is, under the khilafah, the Supreme Court will decide many, many issues, and the people will have to go according to whatever the Supreme Court decided, rather than having your sheep or 50, 60 people, or a few thousand people that are going to go and do things your way, you'll have to go to the Supreme Court and challenge the verdict there and try to turn it over. That will, it will be how the process will have to be. And that will not be based upon necessarily, uh, again, it depends how the makeup of the Supreme Court is and everything. Anyway, this is one important issue that I wanted to discuss, but I wanted to discuss an introversy dichotomy. This is why the difference of opinion exists, because of this dichotomy. This ayah here, he's, this ayah says what? Very interestingly, Allah says, in this ayah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَالَّذِي جَعَلَ الشَّمْسَ دِيَاءَ وَالْغَمَ نُورَ وَقَدَّرَهُ مَنَازِلَ And we made the moon into phases. Why? What is the illa? What is the purpose? لِتَعْلَمُوا So you will know أَدَدَ السِّنِينَ وَالْحِسَابِ So that you will know the number of years and you will know the hisab. This is what Allah says in Quran. Allah made the moon into phases so you will be able to have a calendar. So you will be able to figure out the years and you'll be able to do the hisab. But here's the issue. The Prophet said, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, the Prophet said what? Start your fast and end your fast by seeing the, by seeing the moon. The Prophet said, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, نَحْنُ أُمَّ أُمِّيُّونَ We are an ummah that is unnerved. لَا نَكْتِبُ وَلَا نُحْسَبُ We don't write and we don't calculate. تَعْلَمُ تَعْلِمُ Know your month. تَعْلَمُ الشَّهَرُ Know the month. And then the Prophet pointed to maybe 30 and then 29. Meaning 29 days or 30 days. Know it by what? Looking at the 
So how do, how do we deal with this? On the one side, Quran says, we made the phases of the moon so you can, ha you can know the years and you will be able to do hisab because you can do hisab on the moon. And on the other side, our Prophet ﷺ says, you have to what? You see the moon? How will you... Now you can choose one, which one is general, which one is specific. You can choose one over the other, or you can try to merge them together. There is an opinion about this hadith, the one that I read. By the way, it's authentic, it's in Sahih Muslim, and there are many narrations of this, where the Prophet said, نَحْنُ أُمَّ أُمِّيُّ We are an unlettered people, we don't write... And we don't calculate. So know the, the month by seeing the moon. Basically, this is what the Prophet said, sallallahu alayhi wa The opinion of this hadith is, the Prophet said, yes, we are a people that don't write it right. Why? Because the Arabs did, weren't lettered people. They were ummi. The Prophet was talking about his people at his time. If you take it in its absolute sense, that means don't read and don't calculate ever. Don't do calculation. Obviously, that was not the intent of the Prophet. We don't write and we don't calculate, meaning we can't do that. We don't know how to make the process of hisab. We don't know how to make uh, the, uh, the hisab of the moon. We don't know it. So if we don't know how to do hisab, we don't know how to do calculations, then the only way to know what is the what month is by? By seeing it. If you take this interpretation of the hadith, then the ayah of the Qur'an and the hadith, they go together, that you can go ahead and calculate, and if you don't know how to calculate, then go ahead and see the, see the moon. So, over here also amongst the fuqaha, there, there's a lot of issues on this issue because there's a lot of issues around this issue. One of the issues is, when we talk about ilm al nujum the knowledge of the stars. Generally, when scholars learned about, and, and this has happened in, in, in many, many fields. I'll give you an example before I give you this example. Uh, there's the example of magic. Magic, what we consider real magic, the jinns and the shayateen and sahab. Magic and science at one time were considered as one entity. They weren't considered as two different entities. When we talked about in the olden days, the pre-industrial age, when we talked about Ilm al Nujum, the knowledge of the stars, people and the scholars of Islam immediately, and because that was 99% of the reason it was used for, the scholars immediately thought of astrology. They had not yet made a clear distinction between astrology and astronomy. That hadn't happened. So if you said to somebody, oh, we're going to use the moon, we're going to do hisab, we're going to look at the moon, Immediately, many of the scholars of Islam, they would feel what? This is shirk. You can't do this. You can't use the horoscopes. You can't use the zodiac signs. And because the clear distinction, because this has happened in the modern time, where ulum have become clearly distinct. Otherwise, like for example, science was known as what? Science was what? What was it called? Before science was called science, what was it called? Natural philosophy. That has a lot of subjects in it. It has a lot of good subjects in it, a lot of bad subjects in it. It has all sorts of subjects, and it has science in it, it has philosophy in it, it's natural philosophy. In the same way, Ilm al Nujum in the olden days was primarily used for and primarily considered the knowledge of the horoscopes, the knowledge of the zodiacs. So naturally, the scholars, they were what? They were averse to this. It was only after Galileo and, and many of the Muslim scholars before that, even, who started doing Hisab. Now, what did the scholars say about Hisab? And, but over here, don't think I'm dismissing Ru'ya. I'm not, because I'll give you the, the points about that too. And then there's a lot of other things to consider. Even if we have Hisab, then there are other things that need to be considered. But definitely, one of the things that I will point out, because time is running out, I want to point one thing out. One definite advantage of having Hisab is that if you don't have Hisab, you cannot have a yearly calendar. You cannot have Muslims... Muslim institutions, Muslim businesses, Muslim government saying we will have a meeting in Ramadan on the 25th of Ramadan or we'll have a meeting in the 22nd of Muharram or if you don't have a full calendar you cannot have Muslims using a calendar functionally and you will be forced to use the calendar that's the Gregorian calendar for all your dates and you cannot use the Islamic calendar that way so you have to come up with a calendar based upon Hisa 
You have to if you want to be functional. If you want the khilafah, and if you want to set dates and have meetings, you have to have a calendar based upon hisab. But it has to be the Islamic calendar. And we should be proud of our calendar, because it's miraculous. And the other thing I want to say in terms of ru'ya that I will share with you, it's not the job of some scholars of Islam to go see the moon. It's not. Because seeing the moon, the moon is the sunnah and the dua given by the Prophet for every Muslim. Every Muslim, you should take out your children when the moon is about to be, the new moon is coming out. And you should, we, I, I, you know, I've said this before, every Muslim family that can afford should buy a telescope because we want our children to look at the creation of Allah and to be awed by it. And you know, I remember when I was young, um, I was in Saudi Arabia, and this was the, like, you know, after every 60 years, the Haleous Comet comes out. You know about this, right? So my, my dad and my dad's friend, they took us out deep into the desert, so we'd use binoculars to see the Haleous Comet. This was maybe 20 years ago, or more than that, maybe even 30-some 30, 30 years ago. If you remember that, so we went deep into the into the desert and just seeing the sky, just seeing the comet, just seeing the moon, just seeing the stars, and exposing that to your children, not in Ramadan, not just in the month of Hajj, but to do it what every every month. Do you know the dua of the Prophet sallallahu to see the moon? What is the dua? There's a dua of the Prophet. You're supposed to say it when you see the moon. It's not job of the scholars of Islam. This is, not, this is not an industry of Islamic, uh, you know, the special like, you know, there's firemen, so there's Islamic scholars. Islamic scholars are scholars of Islam, but the responsibility of Islam is on everyone. And so, let me just share with you quickly the dua, which is interesting because there's two different versions of this dua. One is from, uh, um, here, let me, um, Bismillah. The famous one, I'll just go over that for now. Allahumma ahillahu alayna. This is the dua of the Prophet. When you see the moon, you should do this dua. So it, this is beyond just calculations. Yes, you can do calculations. Yes, calculations are good to have. There are many advantages of that. And But at the same time, we need to look upwards. Because, you know, Imam uh, Malik bin Nabi was a great scholar from um, Morocco. He was a great scholar, from, a great intellectual. He was like, maybe on par with Iqbal, Muhammad Iqbal, like one of those scholars that I consider like, uh, like Sayyid Musti Rahmatullah like he's like, like Iqbal, basically, except he was from Turkey. Malik bin Nabi was like Iqbal, except he was in Morocco. Anybody here from Morocco that knows Malik bin Nabi? Ever heard of Malik bin Nabi? Anyway, Malik bin Nabi was a great scholar. He was a historian, he knew about Islamic civilizations. He said one of the differences between the Muslim civilization and the Western civilization is that Islamic civilization always is looking upwards. We're always looking up. We're always looking to space. We are the people always looking to space. And the Western civilization is always looking to the earth to dominate the earth, how to exploit the earth, to use the earth to its purposes. So this is one of the things that he talks about in great detail. And, and, and he does this in a very fantastic way. I haven't probably elucidated what he was trying to say as eloquently. But you know, in Sutra al what does Allah say? You know, uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, uh, he wants to test you which one of you will be good in deeds how do you how do you bring that about how do you create that personality right what's the eye if the imam asks you can say it no 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 Sutra al-Mulk تبارك الذي بيده الملك وهو على كل شيء قدير الذي خلق الموت والحياة ليبلوكم أيكم أحسن عملا وهو العزيز الغفور الذي خلق السبع السماوات انتباقا ما ترى في خلق الرحمن من تفاوت you find no, no flaws in the creation of Allah ما ترى في خلق الرحمن من تفاوت فرجع البصر هل ترى من فطور go ahead challenging everyone and a Muslim should take on this because you will realize the greatness of Allah when you do this Ask yourself, do I see any flaw in Allah's creation? And then what? No, go back. Look again. And when it's saying it twice, it doesn't mean twice. It means over and over again. Go ahead, do it again. Second time. 
ثم ارجع البصر كرتين ينقلب اليك البصر خاصيا وهو حصين your eyes will come back and become tired but you will not see a flaw in Allah's creation if you want your children to have good deeds good with parents good with everyone care about Islam be good people then you have to connect them to the cosmos you have to connect them to the creation of Allah inna fi khalqi as-samawati wal ard indeed in the creation of the heavens and the earth wa ikhtilaf al-layl wal nahar in the alteration of the day and the night the ayat in the ulil al-albab there are signs for people that reflect alladhi as a result of what this reflection it's the iman comes from reflection of looking at the universe of Allah this is the same when Allah says inna ma yakhsha Allah min ibadihi al ulama the ulama are the ones that fear Allah Allah is talking about his creation in that ayah and then Allah says alladhina yadhkuruna Allah qiyama wa qu'udan wa ala junubihim those that remember Allah standing and sitting and laying on their sides by the way which is sunnah so this is telling you the connection with the sunnah of the prophet they say rabbana ma khalaqta hadha batil Allah you yatafakkaruna fi khalq as-samawati wa they ponder over every muslim is a scientist in that sense one of the great scholars of Islam who was killed who was a teacher in Philadelphia at Temple University he used to say this every muslim is a scientist every muslim is told to look at and observe the creation and and of course this this is positive you can say it's a type of positive theology and a negative theology you look at creation to understand who Allah is not this is negative negative theology is understanding who God is not by looking at creation and positive creation is to have awe and 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 to understand the greatness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so the sunnah of the prophet is to take your families out not once a month not twice a month every month take out your children and do the dua the dua of the prophet is allahumma ahillahu alayna bil amni wal iman allah bring this make this moon for us a source of aman a peace inner tranquility and iman and then what was salamati was salam and security external security and islam make this moon a good and then help us to do what rabbika wa rabbuka allah and then you say to the moon allah is my rabb and allah is your rabb too and in another, in another version you say wa tawfiqi bima and you continue the same dua but you say wa tawfiqi bima tuhibbu wa tarqa oh allah and then you're saying to allah because give me peace and security by this moon give me amni wal iman was salamati was salam and then you say allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give me the ability to do actions that will make you happy looking at the moon looking at the moon it's very powerful it's a very powerful exercise to do with your family so anyway <coughs> when the prophet said to see the moon it is the sunnah of the prophet to do so and we should do so but at as far as the calendar is concerned you don't need ru'ya because when the prophet said la naktibu wa la nahsab we don't read and we don't write we are an unlettered people he meant the arabs of his time he didn't mean the non arabs he meant he didn't mean la naktub don't ever write or la nahsab don't ever calculate he didn't mean that that would mean that no muslim can learn math or no muslim can read and write that's what it would mean that's not what he meant you can look at the ru'ya you can have a yearly otherwise you can have a yearly calendar like i said please come forward and inshallah I'll continue my second khutbah أقول قولي هذا أستغفر الله لي ولكم ولسائر المسلمين والمسلمات. إن الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره. ونشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له ونشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله هو الذي جعل الشمس ضياء والقمر نورا وقدره منا وقدره منازل لتعلم عدد السنين والحساب ما خلق الله ذلك إلا بالحق يفصل الآيات لقوم يعلمون. If someone insists on doing رؤيا, it should be no problem because it's a sunnah of the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم to do so. If someone insists on calculation, it should be no problem because it's in the Quran to do so. It's 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 it, it's encouraged in the Quran. And just to go over both of the aspects, Allah says He is the one who created the sun. وَالَّذِي جَعَلَ لَكُمُ الشَّمْسَ دِيَاءً وَالْقَمَرَ نُورًا And He made the the moon a light for you. وَقَدْتَرَهُ مَنَازِلَ And put the phases of the moon for what reason? لِتَعْلَمُ أَدَدَ السِّنِينَ وَالْحِسَابِ So you will know the years and you'll be able to make calculations. Okay? 
Then Allah says, مَا خَلَقَ اللَّهُ ذَلِكَ إِلَّا بِالْحَقِ Allah did not create this except in truth. Allah created the sun and the moon for a purpose. What is the purpose? What is the illa according to this ayah? So you'll know the years. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, يُفَسِّرُ الْآيَاتِ لِقَوْمِ يَعْلَمُونَ Allah clarifies His ayat so you will get to know. Now, <clears throat> I don't have much time, so I just want to quickly say that this is one issue. Can you do ra'ya? Yes, you can do ra'ya. Because the Prophet encouraged it, he did it in his time. But can you do hisab? According to Quran, you can do hisab. And you know, in general, Quran, many places, ash-shamsu wal qamaru, husband, the sun and the moon, they follow and calculate. You can calculate. You know what's so interesting about calculation in the moon? You know how I said this, the moon is always facing the earth on the, the same side. If the earth, if the moon was rotating and showing us different sides, it would be much harder to calculate the hisab. Because the reflection of the moon from its different, because it has different mountain ranges, different bulk, so the reflection on the earth would be different. And when the reflection on the earth comes, what can the scientists tell? I also want this to be clear. Scientists can tell, based upon the reflection of the moon, in which area of the earth the moon will be clear no matter what, even if it's bad weather, you'll be able to see it. They can tell that if it's bad weather, you may not be able to see it. Because depending upon the distance and the type of reflection, they can tell, you can see the moon based upon having optical aid. You have a telescope or something, you can see the moon. Okay? So, now, you can use calculations in another way, which is also interesting. It's an interesting discussion because this is a long, long discussion. You can talk about this for six hours. You can use the the calculations to determine where you can, where you will, where it's impossible to see the moon. Where it's impossible to what? You can determine through calculations, okay, the moon can only be seen in these areas. Therefore, if somebody outside that area says, I saw the moon, you know it is what? It's not correct. There should be no disparity. I want this to be very clear. There can be, there should be, never any disparity between calculation and seeing. I'll give you an example. If somebody's inside a building and looks at his watch and says it's 1.30, he knows it's door time. And the person that's seeing the sun outside, he's also seeing the sun outside and he says it's door time. Should there be a difference of opinion between the two? There should be no difference of opinion between the two. If somebody makes hisab correctly, if he makes hisab correctly, or he's looking at the moon, should there be a difference of opinion? There should be no difference of opinion because seeing the moon, if it's really there, then your hisab will also tell you that it's there. Because Qur'an tells you that it's going according to what? A hisab. So both ideas are correct. Imam Shafi'i, half of the Shafi'i scholars were okay with... And by the way, some of the scholars, like Imam Shafi'i says, Hisab qat'i. Hisab, when you make hisab, one plus one is two. Can there ever be a debate about that? Calculation is definite. There can be no, about, if somebody says, I saw the moon, can there be a difference of opinion? Yes, there can be a difference of opinion compared to if you are what? Calculating is one plus one is always going to be what? There can be, he, Imam Shatabi says, it, Hisab is more definite, more definite than even seeing. Anyway, but majority of the fuqaha, and I explained to you why, because in the olden days, majority of the reasons you need the stars was for is, is uh, not astronomy, but for astrology. So the scholars, they were averse to this. But now we are living in a time where we now, Allah, what Allah used to say, I made the moon according to our hisab, now we know what that hisab is. You can use the NASA observatories to do that. So both are correct. Now the other issue, which I don't have time to go into right now, so I'm just going to end this, but I'll just mention the issue, is if you see the moon, does it apply for all of the world? or just only for the area that you're in. This is now the second issue, which inshallah, maybe some other time I will talk about. So why did I talk about this? I talked about this so that no matter which side of the argument you're in, you can be at rest about the other side. It's not like they're doing kufr. It's not like, oh, they're out of Islam. Oh, how could they do this? Each group has its basis within the Quran and the Sunnah of the Prophet. And each group has its understanding based upon the text and the court, not just text, but classical texts and classical scholars, like many of the Maliki scholars, they're divided on this issue. Many of the Shafi'i scholars are divided on this issue. So there is a difference of opinion that's existed from classical times on this issue. Anyway, so then it's not a big deal. Yes, sometimes it may happen. We have a difference of opinion. We do Eid on different days. But over for that, I will also say, you 
should try to go with the community. You, just like if there's a Supreme Court and it decides the khilaf, if the, if the community decided one way, if they made a right ijtihad, they get double the reward. If they made a bad ijtihad, then they just get one reward. Anyway, Rabbana atina fi dunya hasana wa fil akhirati hasana wa kina adhab al Rabbana zalamna anfusana wa illam taqfil lana wa tarhamna lana kunna min al-khasirin. Rabbana hablana min azwajina wa dhuriyatina kurrata ayuni wa ja'alna lil muttaqin imama. اللهم اغفر لنا اللهم ارحمنا بالقران العظيم واجعله لنا اماما ونورا وهدى ورحمه وارزقنا تلاوته اناء الليل واطراف النهار يا رب العالمين اللهم صل على محمد وعلى ال محمد كما صليت على ابراهيم وعلى ال ابراهيم انك حميد مجيد اللهم بارك على محمد وعلى ال محمد كما باركت على ابراهيم وعلى ال ابراهيم انك حميد مجيد إن الله يعمركم بالأذل والإحسان وإيتاء ذي القربى وينهى عن الفحشاء والمنكر والبغي يعذكم لعلكم تذكرون اذكروا الله يذكركم فاستجب لكم الباطل الصالح. Make sure to subscribe today and make sure you like and make sure you leave your comments and ideas. جزاكم الله خيرا والسلام عليكم ورحمة الله. أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله